Well, good morning, viewers, subscribers, brothers and sisters. To God be the glory. This is June the second Sunday, the first Sunday of this new month. And my wife and I will be doing communion here after we um, get done with this morning message. Uh, let's pray so we can go ahead on and um, tell you what we're going to be ministering about or teaching about today. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And we always look forward, Lord, to share your word that you share and give us knowledge, wisdom, and understanding about in our spirit. And Lord, we thank you. We are seriously thanking you each and every day for the knowledge, the wisdom, the understanding, the opportunities that we have to meet with people and to talk to you about godly things. And Lord, we thank you for it. We thank you for it in Yeshua's name. Amen and thank God. Alrighty. <clears throat> now, my brothers and sisters, last week we finished up on a four-part series of Being Born Again, which was titled The Unlimited Supernatural Power of Salvation. And um, I had said then that we intend to go and teach on the difference between, which was part of that salvation, which was part of that teaching, the difference between the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the actual being baptized or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And is Christ's teaching on true riches and wealth. Christ's teaching on true riches and wealth. Now, <clears throat> follow along with me on this because as a born-again believer, those of you that's born again, this is strictly for you. You are a born-again believer. This word is strictly for you. Now, those of you that have not became born again, you will never, ever understand what I'm telling you there, right here until you become born again. Or, or... The Lord opened the scales, take, open your eyes and take the scale off your eyes so you can see exactly what I'm talking to, what I'm talking about. All right, if you all will do me a big favor here, um, get your Bibles. I don't know if you have an iPad. I'm recording this from an iPad. I had this other iPad, that my real old iPad that I'm reading. You guys know that we read from the King James Version as well as what other version that we read from to make the Word of God real simple so you can get the perception and an understanding of what the Word is saying. One of the things that you and I as born-again believers need to do is we need to have knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And the Scripture said, you know, wisdom is the principal thing, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Get understanding, because we need this. You know, the Bible says our pe my people perish. God said my people perish from the lack of knowledge. Knowledge of what? This world system or the knowledge of his word? Both. The world system, you need to know what's going on in the world, but you need to know that the Lord said, be of good cheers, for I have overcome the world. Now, why, why are we teaching specifically on Christ's teaching on true riches and wealth. True riches and wealth. Well, <clears throat> because the world system, well, let me do this. I'll get to this verse. I'm going to come back to Matthew's chapter 619, but where are we going to go now first? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Is over here in Luke 16, and I'm going to start at the 10th verse. And I want to show you what, um, what the Word of God says here. So let's just do this. Let's start reading from the Easy Read version. Whoever, whoever can be trusted... With small things can also be trusted with big things. 
And I'm reading, I told you, I'm reading from the easy read version. Whoever is dishonest in little things will be dishonest in big things too. And Christ is saying, if you cannot be trusted with worldly riches, worldly riches, you will not be trusted with true riches. My brothers and sisters, now, you and I, and if you study the word, you'll see there is a difference in which the Lord calls wealth and riches. There's a scripture says in my house, there's wealth and riches, wealth and riches. And you, please, you go and you study for yourself. What does the Lord mean when he said wealth and riches? Wealth and riches. What's the difference between wealth and riches? What's, those are two different words, but what do they really mean? In my house, there's riches and wealth, or in my house, there's wealth and riches. Because when you're born again, the wealth and riches that the Lord is talking about is not necessarily, because he said, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. But don't confuse the world riches. Turn on the TV and look and see all the different things that rich people are dealing with. Look at it. Just turn on the TV and look. You can see the world supports its own. And truth, revelation, understanding, the, the world system is not even based on truth. The world system is based on lies, deception, and destruction. And, and if you look at what's going on in the world, familiar, just familiarize yourself, look at what's happening in the world. Look at what's happening in the world. Rich people, their problems are not solved by riches, worldly riches. It is not solved. By, in fact, the scripture said, what does it profit a man to gain the whole world? All these material possessions. Rubbing at bowls, the scribes and Pharisees was rich. R rubbing at elbows was ruling, royalty, kings. These people wasn't born again. They were religious people, but full of the devil. They wanted their riches. Let's keep reading because I'm going to show you this. I'm going to show you in scripture what we're reading right here, what was going on. Um, let's keep reading because this is, this is essential. This is so essential. Listen, why is this essential? There is people that are wealthy. I mean, literally have millions and billions of dollars with all kinds of material possession, homes, beach homes, cars, the latest things that you could even wish to have. And, and that is their God. And the Lord told us, you know, as born again believers, you and I cannot have two masters. And we're going to study, we're, I'm going to show you in the scripture where the Lord said that. Either your Lord is Lord and Savior Christ or your Lord is the worldly riches of this world. And when you get caught up in the riches of this world, you can easily, if you're not rooted in the word, be persuaded against the things of God. You see who's making all that racket? That's right. Peanut. That's her. All right, she's going to sit right here while I um, keep doing what I'm doing. All right, let's go back and teach a little bit of this word. This, this girl right here is so, woo, she's too spoiled. Woo. Okay, so let's keep reading where we were at. Sorry about that. I just, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's see if I can pull the screen back up. Maybe that's the reason why she was doing all making that noise. She just burped. 
Okay, so what I've done is I pulled back up. All right, girl. I pulled back up the scripture where he's reading from here in Luke. Um, we're at Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 10. That's where we started from. From those of you that's just now joining us or rejoining us. <clears throat> we read... Uh, in fact, let me just go ahead and reread it just in case some of you just now joining since I went and picked up Peanut. Um, whoever can be trusted with the small things. What does the Lord call small things? Even if you are born again millionaire or you don't have absolutely nothing at all. The Lord wants you to be or be trusted with whatever you have that that little bit of whatever you have in relationship to God's wealth and riches, which we depend on, because our source has always been God himself, Yahweh, his son, Yeshua. He's always been our source and always will be, period. So look what he says. Now, my brothers and sisters, if you're born again, don't I don't care how much money or what possessions you have, don't let that deviate you from doing what's right. You know, my wife and I recently seen different musicians that's well known, that's allowing riches to deceive the world, deceive themselves and deceive the world. I mean, if you want to exercise and build your body up, then that's fine. But don't allow yourself to be moved from your godly principles to the world standards, with, especially when Romans 12, 1 and 2 said, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable unto the Lord. Go read that and then read verse 2. He tells us, be not conformed to this world. Don't be conformed to this world. Our job is to conform the world. And you know what? If, if you tell people what the word of God says and they willfully reject it, then go look to see what Matthews 5.44 says. Pray for them to deceitfully use you. Pray for them. Because there is a separation between them and us. And Christ told us what it is. Okay, let's, look at, let's keep reading. <clears throat> Levin says, if you cannot be trusted with worldly riches, which as far as the Lord is concerned, that's fine. Because he wants us to be blessed. He wants you and I to be blessed. But he wants us to use wisdom with it. He wants us to have the right attitude with it. And if the Lord cannot trust you with a little bit of money, my wife always calls it a little bit over breakfast money. She said, if people can't even handle just a little bit over breakfast money, they go wow. Go wow. Look what it says right here. If you cannot be trusted with worldly riches, you will not be trusted with the true riches. True riches. And you and I, being born again believer, must be able to handle the true riches that Christ is talking about. Let's look and see what he's talking about. 12. If you cannot be trusted with the things that belong to someone else, suppose, you know, <clears throat> years ago, my wife and I went and worked at a convenience store. Well, I did, but my wife and my children came along with me. Because this brother that we were friends with owned the store. And then he called me up and said, hey, look, brother, I'm going to go visit my mother that's on the other side of the state, other side of the country. We were on the East Coast. He was going to the West Coast. And he said, can you run my store until I get back? And my wife and I, we were in the ministries. And we said, sure, brother, I'll come up here and, and you know, run your store for you. So I brought my wife and I brought my little kids. My kids was little at the time. Now, we were showing our kids 
at the store how to count money. How to actually, if a person gave you a $20 bill and the stuff rang up to a certain amount of money, how to just start from the cents and then count the money back to the whole. And that's how you do it. And, and we taught them that. But then my wife was telling my son, our son and our daughter, you got to be diligent when you're dealing with other people's money. This is not your money. And you have to review this as play money so you don't get enticed. Don't get enticed by other people's money, regardless of how small, how large. Because even today, if you look in the world system, people are going to stores, grocery stores. They'll go to Walmart. They'll go to wherever it is. And you will see people getting, they stealing every day. Getting caught from stealing every single day. Because they're thieves. They're thieves, and the Lord warned us about storing up things. And, and I have a scripture for you on that. The thieves come to steal. Thieves. So the Lord told each and every one of us as born-again believers what to do and what not to do. And there's a difference how he wants us to handle our riches in relationship to the world's riches. And he also told us what we need to do for those individuals that's stealing from us and being deceptive. I mean, willfully stealing and being deceptive. He said, this is your guideline. This is what I want you to do. And that comes from knowledge, wisdom, and understanding in the word. And when you're born again and you know that God got you, when the Lord has you, 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 you never lose. The world think they just stole and won. No, they just stole from themselves. And they will have to give an account for that because you will reap what you sow. You will reap that. All of us will because God don't have no respect to a person. So this is the reason why you and I need to be born again and be in compliance with his word and his teachings. Look what he said right here. Let me read 12 again. And if you cannot be trusted with the things that belong to someone else, you will not be given anything of your own. <clears throat> my brothers and sisters, <clears throat> my wife and I have been faithful down through the years running other people's com companies, working for folk and giving them what was theirs. And taking what little bit we were given. <laughs> Even working in ministries and being a blessing to help people. Helping people. We have actually given people and been a blessing to folk. And some of these people couldn't care less about it. But guess what? We gave from the heart and the Lord know it. Look what it says right here in 13. You cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two lords. Who's the two lords he's talking about? You will hate one master. <clears throat> no, no, no. Let's go. I skipped over something. 13. You cannot. I'm, I'm still reading out of the easy to read version. Easy to read version. You cannot serve two masters at the same time. Same thing as you cannot serve two lords. I need to, you know what? You guys see me squinting because that print was so little. Okay, I got this better. All right, okay, I just spread it up a little bit. You cannot serve two masters at the same time. You will hate one master and love the other, or you will be loyal to one and not care about the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. What does mammon mean in Hebrew? In Hebrew, mammon means money. At the same time, my brothers and sisters, either you're going to seek the face of God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and body, or you're going to run after money with every fiber of your being. And that's a mistake. That is a mistake. All right. 
Look, let's keep reading. My brothers and sisters, God will never, ever change his law. God will never, ever change his law. Look at verse 14. The Pharisees was listening to all these things. And Christ was talking. And the Pharisees was listening. And look at this. They criticized Christ because they all loved money. They hated Christ. Christ was telling them exactly. He, he was explaining to people how you're going to inherit an eternal life. Eternal life. And these folks were so focused on their material possessions and their money. <clears throat> they forgot that that was deceitful. Deceitful. Let's keep reading real quick. Let's go to 15. Christ said to them, you make yourselves look good in front of people, but my heavenly, but God knows, his father, what is really in your heart. In other words, you, you, you serve me, you serve the Lord with your mouth, but your heart is far from the Lord. You so focus on your material possessions and how you can steal from other people that you have completely abandoned the things of God. My brothers and sisters, the Lord has warned us, be, be mindful, be watchful of wolves in sheep clothing. These folks will go to church, go through the ritual, and guess what? They are no more born again in followers of Christ than a sinner man. They worse according to the scripture than they are. Worst because they're pretenders. They're liars, deceivers, and pretenders. But judgment day is coming for all of us. All of us. And people that willfully lie and deceive and cheat people and don't repent from that, you're going to lift up your eyes in the pit of hell. I suggest you get that thing straight before you leave here. Get it straight. Look what the Lord is saying. He said, you make yourselves look good in front of people, but God knows what's really in your heart. What people think is important is worth nothing to God. What People think is important. You got your people is running out here living in huge homes. They run out here grinning, buying huge homes. It's costing thousands of dollars a month for that mortgage note. And then if you wealthy enough for whatever, you could pay cash for it, but some of them don't. We look and see where people are getting million dollar homes repossessed. Airplanes repossessed. People are losing it. Let's keep reading. All right, we're 28 minutes into this and I've got a lot more scriptures to give you. Okay, let's go to verse 16 and share with that. Here is what Christ is saying. And he told these to the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Sanhedrins. These, these Pharisees. Look, before John the baptizer came, people were taught the law by Moses. Taught the law of Moses. And the writings of the prophets but since the time of John, the good news, the gospel of Christ himself with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrins, the scribes, 
these religious folk. Didn't have a clue of. They didn't, good, they didn't know. The good news about God's kingdom is being told. My brothers and sisters, I'm right here, glory to God, right here, right now, reading scriptures and telling you about the good news of Christ himself. The good news. And everyone is trying hard to get into it. We, once you accept Christ as Lord, that's wonderful, but it doesn't stop there. That's, that's the beginning. Because there's a whole lot of trials, tribulations, and persecutions come along with being born again. Why? Because Satan has assigned a demon to you to disrupt everything in your life to make it hell. But because the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, which you're going to be teaching about, and the word of God that you study daily, this right here, you learn to put on the full armor to, to protect you from all that. But knowledge needs to come. Wisdom needs to come. Understanding needs to come. In teaching the word, how does that come? Trials, tribulations, persecution, things that the Lord teach you and show you through, through knowledge. You're going to learn some things. My mother used to say years of teaching things that days don't know. And that's true. Let's look and look. Let's look and keep reading. 17 said, but even the smallest part of the letter in the law cannot be changed. The Lord himself, Christ himself, fulfilled the law. And he was the only one that was able to fulfill the law. Let me interject this thought to you really quick. Because you guys have all heard of this. You remember the young rich man, that young rich man that came to Christ, dropped to his knees, fell at the foot of Christ and said, Lord, Lord, Master, Master, as a child, I have kept the commandments. As a child, I've kept this commandments. He was rich. He was rich. And he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, he knew I have all this money. But I need to know about my soul. I need to know how can I in, inherit eternal life. Eternal life. Because he needed to know. The Lord responded to this rich man because he knew his heart. And you know the Lord knew his heart because he had the Holy Spirit. He is the Holy Spirit himself, so he had discernment. He told him, go sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Pick up your cross and come follow me. Go read that. What do you think that, that rich man did? Because the scripture said he had great wealth. Great wealth. I don't think he had the wealth that Abraham had. I don't think he had the wealth that Job had. But he was rich. This young man heard exactly what Christ said. But because that money, his riches was his God. He dropped his head because the scripture said he was so, so sad. He, he just left. He had every intention of holding on to his riches. Those riches had him. He didn't have the riches. He had it, but they had such a grip on him, he couldn't let it go. So he'd rather keep his riches than give it up for eternal life. So what happened? He made the choice to die and accept eternal damnation for the money, his worldly riches. And guess what, my brothers and sisters? There is people today that will accept and receive and rather have eternal damnation than to pick up their cross 
for the true riches. The true riches. The Lord said, in our house, there's riches and wealth. My brothers and sisters, tell me how many billions of dollars is, is, is good health? Can you put a price on your good health? Is billions of dollars worth your health? Billions. Would you switch good health for billions or millions or trillions? No, I wouldn't keep it. You, you can keep your billions. Thank the Lord for my health. Keep your billions. Let's look at what it says right here. But even the smallest part of the letter of the law cannot be changed. The Lord said that, that none of it can be changed. It's written. That law that God gave Moses was written. And God didn't change it. And Moses didn't have the authority to change it. Christ himself said, no, no, it can't be, it cannot be changed. He said, it would be easier for heaven and earth to pass away then change the littlest bit in that letter. Let's keep reading. All right, I'm, I'm going to read this real quick because you guys have all heard of this. You know what? This, this next verse is talking about... Um, Christ said, There was a rich man who always was dressed in the finest clothes, he was so rich that he was able to enjoy all the best things every day. This is the way people are right now on earth. Very rich that he can enjoy whatever the world's best and greatest things to offer. The finest clothes, the nicest house, the nicest cars, your huge yacht. I just seen recently where a brother, not a brother, a young man, young man, he just went and spent $300 million on his yacht. And cruising back and forth, three hundred million on his yacht. But there, if look at the movie stars, they got big homes, big homes, not just one home, million dollar homes spread across. Even I even seen where a brother went up there and bought a several million dollar place in Dubai. They got all these riches, worldly riches. Now my brothers and sisters, worldly riches. The finest cars, the finest homes, the finest clothes. They even put these name brand million, thousands of dollars clothes on, on kids. But look what the Lord is saying right here. This He's given us an example. Glory to God. There was a rich man who always dressed in the finest clothes. He was so rich that he was able to enjoy all the best things of life every day. And there also was a very poor man named Lazarus. And Lazarus' body was covered with sores. And he was often put by the rich man's, he was often put by the rich man's gate. This, man, this rich man lived in his mansion. And it was gated. You know, you're not going to go in and out of these peoples like a palace and a king. These people gated off their property because he's rich. Look what he says right here. And Lazarus wanted only to eat the scraps of food left on the floor under the rich man's table as the dogs came and licked the sword. Lazarus was in the same position as some dog. Like some dogs would just eat whatever you dropped. Let me eat that. Let me eat that. Look right here. Later, Lazarus died. The angels took him and placed him in the arms of Abraham. The scripture did not say Lazarus went before the Lord to be judged. No, read it. I'll read it again for you. You guys know exactly where we are, where we at. Let me, let me say it again. Book, chapter, and verse. Luke, chapter 16. And now we're down here. At verse 22. Lazarus died. The angels took him and placed him in the arms of Abraham. 
So obviously Abraham himself had died. The father, he's the father of faith. The father of, remember he had Isaac and Israel. Remember those two boys? He died. When he died, he, he's in heaven. Here's scripture right here. In heaven. With, and guess what? Abraham was very rich. God made him rich. And he didn't stagger at the promises of the Lord like you and I. We cannot stagger it. We, we got to stay focused. We're going to leave here. Let's keep reading. This is so essential that you and I need to hear this word, this day and age in which we're leaving. If I die today, my wife is going to have to dispose of all the properties we have. She's not going to go mow grass. The, this house will be sold, the land, the property, everything that we own. She, she will have to handle that. And it will be executed based on whatever will, if I live, to do. But if you're not born again, we're not going to take the things that God blessed us with and give it to an unbeliever. That's not happening. That's not happening. That's, that's what was wrong with King, I mean, David. He, he, look, look at some of those brothers. They, they were so aggravated. He said, I got everything I want. My kingdom. My, he said, look, but what's going to happen to this stuff? When I die, who's, whose hands is it going to fall in? Are these people to love God himself or were they not? You, you don't really know what, what's going to happen unless the Lord gives you some discernment and you can make arrangements what's going to happen. Look what happened right here. Real quick, my brothers and sisters. Real quick. He said, Abraham. Oh, oh, oh. Let's go back. The angels took him and placed him in the arms of Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. He was sent, look at this, he was sent to the place of death and was in great pain. He saw Abraham far away with Lazarus in his arms and he called, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus to me so that he can dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am suffering in this fire. My brothers and sisters, that was the rich guy. And you know what? I thought I was going to be able to get through every bit of this with just this one video. But this is too essential and too important to just rush through. Too important. As born again believers, you and I need to understand Christ's teaching on true riches. Because the worldly riches has deception. It's deceitful. It's deceitful. And the Lord warned us to watch out for wolves in sheep clothing and this deceitfulness of riches. Look, let me get through to this. And then I am going to pick up a part two on this, obviously. Because I got so much more. Hold it. The Holy Spirit have so much more to teach us about true riches. Look what he said right here. Mm, 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 mm. 25. But Abraham said, my child, remember when you lived? You had all good things in life. But Lazarus had nothing but problems. Now he is comforted here. And you are suffering. Also, there is a big pit between you and us. And no one can cross over to help you. And no one can come here from there. The rich man said, Then please, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to my father's house on earth. I have five brethren. He can warm my brothers, so that they will not come to this place of pain. <sighs> Let's keep reading. But Abraham said, they had the law of Moses and the writings of the prophets to read. Let them learn from that. The rich man said, 
no father Abraham, but of someone came to them from the dead, then they would decide to change their lives. Now, he was living on earth when he was alive with all of his riches and bling bling. He absolutely, he saw Lazarus, the beggar, every single day. The Lord said, the poor is going to be with you. But did he have compassion in his heart with all of his riches? He could have, he could have did everything. He could have changed the whole life of Lazarus, his whole life. He could have bought him a home, bought him cars, fed him, gave him some medical report. He could have, he could have spread that wealth like you and I supposed to do. When the Lord blesses with something, don't hold back to be a blessing to people. Don't hold back. Because ultimately, the Lord is going to always make sure we're provided for. We're his sons. We're his children. He's not like a man. There is no lying, deception, and thievery in Christ himself, not our father. So when people steal from you, you didn't lose nothing. They did. They're the one that's going to have to give in that account for that thievery. Look. Look what it says right here in 31, and we're going to get ready to wrap this up. But Abraham said to him, if your brothers won't listen to Moses and didn't listen to Moses and the prophets, which written in this word, they won't listen to someone who comes back from the dead. No, they're not. There's people that they could get. Uh, I'm alive and teaching this word right here, right now. And there is people not paying attention to this unless the Holy Spirit tugs on their soul to pay attention. There are people who just crack up laughing and say, look at that fool. Look at that fool. The day will come where they will find out who the real fool really is. The day will come. If they do not, my brothers and sisters, repent and seek forgiveness and work out their own soul salvation with fear and trembling, they will pay for that. My brothers and sisters, don't be fooled. Listen, this is part one of Christ's teaching on true riches and wealth. Because he said, in our house, in our house. But you got to find out what does the Lord mean by that? What does the Lord mean by true riches? He said he, he, he great, takes great pleasure in the prosperity of his people. And he said, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper even as your soul prospers. But nothing, let nothing separate you from the love of God. You know, that's one of the scriptures that I meant to write down. So I have to go write this down. Let nothing separate you from the love of God. All right, let nothing separate you from the love of God. Listen, we, we are 47 minutes into this. I'm going to stop right here. Let's pray. Now, Father, as we come to you, woo, in the name of our Lord and Savior Christ, we thank you, Father God. We thank you and you alone for this word that we can chew on it, live on it, Get ourselves straight about true riches in Christ. Now, Father, those that are listening to this word, let this word drop in their spirit and make a change. Make a change in their, in their life, their faith, what they're believing. Help us, Lord, to be about your business and do what you called us to do so that we can inherit eternal life, eternal life with you, Lord. Lord, you said, I go and prepare a place for you that where I am, you will be also. Lord, I personally want to be with you with eternal life, personally. And Lord, I thank you for this word. In Yeshua's name we pray, amen, and thank God.
All right, my brothers and sisters, y'all be blessed. And we will pick this up, Lord willing, if I'm still here, next Sunday with part two. Y'all be blessed and we'll talk to you real soon.